Hello, I'm Ambar. And I'm Neha. We are parents of a gifted child who's on autism spectrum. Through our YouTube channel, we want to help parents with children on the autism spectrum learn more about it and avoid a lot of myths which are there around autism. Provide tips and strategies that can help ease the parenting journey for you. Uh, please remember that all our content is well researched but every child is unique and there is no way that this video would replace any kind of a professional medical advice or intervention. If you find this video helpful, please like it, subscribe to our channel and further share it with parents you know whose child may be on the spectrum. Remember you are not alone in this journey and together we can create a brighter future for our children. So in today's uh, video we are going to talk about the importance of obstacle courses and the incredible benefits that they offer for children on the autism spectrum. Now obstacle courses can be an engaging and fun way to help uh, children uh, develop important skills while overcoming a lot of challenges that the children on the autism spectrum face. Generally if you are a new parent uh, in, uh, new, uh, to a child on the spectrum you would you know think that it's just about the uh, lack of you know social and communication skills but it's more than that you know a lot of children on the autism spectrum have issues with their fine motor and gross motor skills their strength uh, and uh, setting up obstacle courses can actually uh, help uh, you know overcome a lot of these uh, issues uh, so if you go to any good ot center you will find that there is an obstacle course so generally ot therapy the foundation of uh, OT is based on obstacles and of course a lot of other things like sensory equipments and all that we will be briefly covering in this video. Uh, we are also planning to start a series on uh, OT. Uh, we will be covering you know different aspects of OT, what are the different uh, areas that are there which are covered under, under OT and what are the activities that you can do to you know cater to those areas areas and improve your child's functioning but that will be a separate series which will start in a couple of months uh, so if you are in a, in a place where you don't have a ot center or any any therapy center or if you are in a waiting list for for getting into therapies or if even if your town has a ot center but there is a you know limited capacity and i mean you're not able to get your child into it uh, we would strongly encourage that you start the obstacle courses uh, activities there are books am available on amazon and other online sites and a lot of videos on youtube as well uh, that teach about different activities that you can do at home but please start this uh, obstacle course activities as early as possible now um, additionally obstacle courses they provide opportunities for social interaction teamwork and boosting their self-confidence now let's um, see some uh, let's uh, explore some fantastic ideas to actually create obstacle courses which are going to be catering to our children basically customized like that so when designing an obstacle course for children on autism spectrum it's essential to consider their unique needs and preferences so we have to see we have to take uh, keep in mind what to, does the child want what does the child need but at the same time what does he prefer what does he like always do any activity keeping in mind their preferences they will put in more effort so safety of course comes first so ensure the course is safe and age appropriate considering the physical um, abilities of the child and his limitations now somebody who's got a little i mean if they've got weak legs you can't really just throw them into something which is going to be you know they, they just can't suddenly start jumping you have to have a proper uh, design around it and sensory considerations take into account the child's sensory needs his sensitivities and provide options uh, for different sensory uh, experiences such as textures sounds and visual elements in visual individualization now that is like you tailor the obstacles based on the child's interests and abilities uh, you know what your child is capable of you have explored you've seen enough in your child so you must keep that in consideration and design everything according to that so that they actively participate otherwise it's going to be a very uh, they might just get bored and they will just leave it in the middle so always try to do something which is around their interest whatever they like like for uh, for instance our son really likes to jump around 
so we can have some activities designed around that so let's see um, some of the ideas which are particularly ben uh, beneficial for the children on the spectrum one thing i would I like to add here is that you know uh, we are talking about setting up a obstacle course uh, now space may always be a constraint for that right so i mean uh, what you could try is uh, find out a park a park would be a good place uh, and you can there are a lot of ot related equipments again uh, and available online nowadays so you can order those some of the smaller courses you can probably set up at home but a lot of them can be done at the park as well because we found that advantage in the park because there was grass as well as sand in the park which we have so my for our son you know it, he loved the feeling of you know walking barefoot on the grass as well as sand and it catered to his sensory requirements so probably you can uh, explore Look like something on that yes okay so let's see some um, things that we can do so it is balance beam challenge first is that you set up a beam or a line on the ground that the child needs to walk across while maintaining their balance this activity helps improve coordination and body awareness so our child um, in the beginning initially when he would go for his ot he would not be able to balance they would give him a balance board also they, he would not be able to balance and they would make him walk on a beam and they would put it in every kind of direction so i have seen him struggling in the beginning and then it improved now that improved he he became more aware about his body how is he supposed to be maintaining a balance so it's really good activity there now sensory stations include stations with different textures such as foam mats sandboxes or water play areas these sensory experiences can help with sensory integration and exploration so as amber uh, already mentioned that um, our child when we take him to the park there are different kinds of textures that he gets to feel so it's the grass it's the sand it's also the cement area that is there uh, plus there is a, a basketball court which has the rubber and plastic i don't know some kind of different kind of a texture so that also kind of helps he walks on that barefoot so it gives them that kind of uh, um, different uh, sensory uh, uh, feelings it gives them a different feel and that is a very very important again now in, tunnel sorry in fact in a, in a previous video we had also talked about the idea of setting up a, a sensory station at in your house as well in your room where, where the child can go and you know have these different uh, materials like say clay sand some uh, putty cotton balls cotton and balls cotton. and uh, slime so towel slime anything all different kind of textures that you can provide to your child to feel uh next is tunnel crawl now uh, creating tunnels using blankets i think this is something when we were also young we would play creating tunnels and everything so we need to do that the same for them boxes or tunnels specifically designed for children now um crawling through tunnels um it it helps them in their spatial awareness and motor planning now um like our son earlier i don't think he would be very much aware that uh, about the space constraint he would have so he can go under the beds now without banging his head or banging his arms he is very uh, very aware about how he's supposed to be doing that any small spaces under the tables tables which are very very low yeah. as well he's able to go through that and without banging his head um the dining table chairs under those as well so he's aware that he doesn't have to hurt himself or get any kind of um any hurt or anything yeah, these are little little things that we don't realize that a child with autism i mean these are not the known classic known symptoms of autism but yes you know these are little little things that if the child has he is not able to judge the i'm not i'm not talking about every child but a lot of them uh, they have problems and you know as you have mentioned a child could would not go under the bed he was scared he couldn't you know judge the distance between the head and the the top surface of the, the surface of the bed and he was scared so uh, tunnel crawling is something that he made that made him you know that fear go away and, and now and now he <laughs> loves tunnels he actually wants us to create tunnels and then he wants to crawl under them so any classes also he goes for he enjoys it he, and he does it multiple multiple times even beam bands for that matter so even in the school i have been uh, repeatedly told that he's doing very well so it's a good thing that we do it if 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 you don't have any equipment to set up a beam balance then what you can probably do is uh, paste a, you know broad tape or something on the ground 
and then you know ask the child to actually walk, walk on that make a path create make, a path create even a with path, chalk yeah. even if you have tiles at home take a sketch pen and do it because it just rubs off yes so another activity could be the hula hoop jump uh, there are those wrong, round big rings that you see uh, generally uh, what we did was we used to place them at varying distance sometimes two together then another little far away uh, then you know it's like he jumps in one and then he jumps in like opens his legs and then he jumps in again and then he opens his legs so that sort of thing it helps in improving their gross motor skills and coordination yes. because you, if you have to jump and split your legs you have to do it with some coordination you can't have one leg here and one leg there yes. so yeah and then we used to create an obstacle path for him which would have you know different uh, you know the, which kind of a puzzle for him to solve with you know he had where he had to walk uh, go through a tunnel then crawl under a chair then jump over a stool uh, and then and, uh, even if you use those bolsters outside for them as well so he would create you are supposed to be jumping over them and then under the table which we tight have then so, add some sensory uh, you know element like an maybe a, a, a different a mat or a carpet which has a different kind of a texture and then a, the tile which on the floor which is of course there so add try to add different textures to that uh, uh, path so it's basically like a sensory path you know a, a pathway designed with uh, a path designed with you know different textures and materials it could also be foam and sand and rubber sur- surfaces as i told you if you're trying to do it outside the house yeah and the child also has to figure out that whether he has to jump over it or go under it yeah. so it's kind of a problem sol- a solving ability yeah. that he is you know he's working on and in that part you can add in obstacles as Not, then you get those uh, plastic cones and uh, you can place them and even between two cones you can keep and then attire uh, a uh, small uh, rope and then that the child has to either crawl over it or go and uh, or jump over it so i mean or you cr- crawl under it yeah i mean it's up to your creativity on whatever you have what best you can provide you know but try to create a path with as which has a mixture of you know different textures and different kind of obstacles So that would really help your child. Uh, in fact, uh, I mean, sometimes it may not might not might not be possible to have you know so many different equipment. So what uh, uh, we know that if you, some parents do is that they together buy these equipments and then they share it. So uh, and they also do it as a group activity uh, because even in, if a child goes for naughty, uh, there are certain group activities where the child is not left alone to do that activity. it is done in group so that he can observe other child and then that way uh, create parallel play skills as well so that could also be a good option uh, that have those play dates where parents bring in different uh, elements equipments and, and equipments and then set up a course either at the park or somebody's house or wherever you know convenient okay so um as already you said that what we can do and how is it going to be beneficial now like uh, what all does it help your child in so more skills literally like by navigating through different obstacles children enhance their balance coordination strength and overall motor skills like we already said that the balance is very very important what happens if your coordination is good you start walking better you are able to do certain things like our son he's able to cycle very well now bicycle he can really ride it earlier he would be with those uh, um, the support wheel support support and the uh, support wheels then he quickly uh, uh, no, i i would say he really picked up pretty fast and then we had to get rid of those support things in fact he broke them <laughs> to get rid of them himself and then uh, now he can actually uh, cycle with one hand here and one hand on the handle and one hand on the back so he's able to judge he's able to coordinate better he's able to understand that where how much does he need uh, what kind of balance does he need to maintain to have that sta- uh, to actually be able to cycle like that even he's able to stand and cycle now so he's been able to understand that earlier i remember when he was very small it would be a problem to um, uh, sort of walk as well so he started he used to fall but anyway with these things he's able to gain his strength and he was able to do it sensory integration the sensory experiences provided by the course help children regulate the sensory input leading to improve improved sensory integration different kinds of surfaces like we have already said we talked about grass sand plastic rubber surface anywhere basketball court whatever you can provide it helps problem solving 
obstacle courses encourage children to think critically and find solutions. So enhancing their problem solving abilities like we've already said so they are able to understand how much strength do they need to solve a problem if they have to open a drawer also that is also a problem for them so how much strength do they need how much do they have open boxes how are they going to do it um, anything else that you can think of adding there? self-confidence if then the child is able to do a lot of things uh, different activities then that definitely enhances his self-confidence and esteem and gives him a positive sense of achievement yeah, especially in the kitchen for us. Yeah, now he's become overconfident and he can climb cupboards and... You know. So he's become confident, I don't know, overconfident, but yes, he's become confident enough to take out things himself, put it in a plate and properly following the whole procedure. And then the first social interaction, obstacles promote social engagement. As we said, we can do it as a group activity in, even in OT classes. Uh, they have these group sessions where children, you know, are made to do those activities together together so, so that they are able to develop parallel play skills and then, and then even turn taking a lot of things come with these kind of interactions turn taking they understand it's not their turn they have to wait waiting also comes with that yes. a lot of things come with that and they are sort of spring into beautiful friendships if they can so obstacle course has, is an exciting way to support the development and well-being of your child with autism. That we'll re- as we told you, dec- definitely try it if you don't have an access to an OT center. It will do a lot of good to your child. And so I hope you found this video helpful and uh, thank you so much. Thank you.